Actually, before we start anything, I want to invite Zayed up yeah, from Alibaba, which is uh, catering tonight's food. Well, thank you, guys. I hope you guys like it. I just hope everyone likes the food. And uh, thanks for doing this, inviting Reem. And this is so emotional for us. I know, and I know it's probably harder for Reem, but I'm going to leave her to speak. Uh, but thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Thank you, John. Thank you, Zayed. Um, everybody knows where Alibaba's is, right? Yeah, yeah we're good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the food's amazing. Um, so my name's John Rubin. I'm a professor in the School of Art and uh, with Wendy Ahrens, who's the director of the Center for Arts and Society <clears throat> in the back and a professor in the School of Drama. Um, we're co-hosting this incredible screening tonight. And um, I'm going to make very brief introductions. Reem really wants to get to the film. Um, but first, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to thank the Kim and Eric Giller Humanities Lecture Fund, the CMU Sustainability Initiative, the Humanities Scholars Program, and the one and only Frank Ratchy Studio for Creative Inquiry and all the people who work here, Harrison and Bill, and Nico is not here right now, for hosting the event. Um, this is part of a series that we started <clears throat> about a month ago where um, visiting scholar Habib Sarosh presented uh, a film, and uh, there'll be some events in the spring in conjunction with the International Film Festival that we'll be hosting. So um, our guests tonight are Reem El Ghazi, who is a resident filmmaker um, who's here through the Artist Protection Fund and the Humanities Program. And I want to give a big, warm welcome to Reem. <laughs> And one of our, I mean, we're like, you know, I got a microphone and we're, it's a little formal, but we want to keep it as informal as possible. One of the things, one of the reasons why we're doing this is that, so that Reem, who is a new scholar here, filmmaker, artist, writer, um, is able to meet colleagues and students and people who might, um, you know, be part of a community for Reem while, while she's here and, and beyond. So please feel free, you know, there'll be time after uh, the movie to, where Nipa and Reem will be discussing the film, but even beyond that, to reach out if you're interested. Um, also, excuse me, um, I want to uh, welcome and thank um, Dr. Nipa Majumdar, who is a professor of film studies at the University of Pittsburgh and will be moderating a uh, discussion after the film with Reem. So thank you, Nipa, for coming. Yeah. So Reem says that, that she's very shy, but I asked her to, I didn't want to read a bio. So that's <laughs> to say a few things so people can get to know you. Yeah. And then Nipa will share some things and then we'll get to the film. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm really bad at this. Okay. So originally I came from theater, by the way. And one day a friend called me. She was in a in a trouble because her assistant, director assistant, left her and she needed someone to help. And it's this silly. I went to help a friend and I never left. That's it. <laughs> There's a lot of information you're leaving out, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I have much more to add to what John said. I mean, I'm across the the street at Pitt. I teach film studies. Um, and uh, one of the courses I teach is documentary film. So this is a, it's, I'm very excited about this film and for, for our discussion after it. Okay, so thank you. Yes. And uh, we'll start the film. <laughs> okay, so these are both live. Seat. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. oh, we all need to take a breath. <laughs> it's a, quite a moving film, I have to say. Um, <laughs> I don't know if there were any dry eyes <laughs> in the room. Many moments like that. Um, I know everybody has questions. I'll just get started with um, 
two things that I wanted to mention. The first is the huge challenge of making a cinematic film about theater. <laughs> so um, I, I noticed many there? strategies that you had for doing that, and I thought it was amazing. Go ahead. Uh, look, at that moment, today I have many theories, and I know how to talk about it. But at that moment, actually, if I want to go back there, I knew nothing. How to capture all that with, from far away? And that's when I had to put away all the technology and to get a camcorder, a very small camcorder. I, I mean really small camcorder with a very long uh, zoom, lens. Zoom, zoom lens. That, and since then, Actually, at that moment when I stood there with that little camera, I found my freedom again with the subjects, with the feelings, with the characters, with everything. So I said, great, <laughs> now we can start, and that's it. Did you give uh, the actors a camera at any point, cameras? Did they film themselves? Uh, I asked them uh, the story from the beginning. Uh, my visa wasn't issued when they started. Uh, I did not, get, did not get a visa when they started working in Germany. So the first half of the film, I was directing from Syria. Wow. 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 <laughs> really? You wow. have to, uh, with the internet we have in Syria? <laughs> they sent me, I wanted to hear the discussions of the day so, so to know where to go, to know my characters, because I, I know nothing about them. Uh, so I asked them to send me what they filmed. I couldn't download it. I said, OK, MP3, please. <laughs> Only audio, I don't want to see. Just give me something to start from. Even the MP3 was a problem, because it was a long MP3. Anyway. Um, I had to, at the end, call on WhatsApp everybody to, to ask them to tell me what did they feel about the day, what did they hear, and how was it, or what was it, everything. I had to ask about details. Everybody else, the sound uh, guy, the camera man, and this is the first half. Uh, and from there also, I asked the ladies, I started to call the ladies to start to know them, to introduce myself to them, and to start a relationship with them. And I asked them to film themselves with their mobiles, mm -hmm. their daily lives, yeah. so they will have their own decision about their private life. I wanted them to share the um, authorship, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's it, actually. It started with the visa at the beginning. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll open it up to the floor soon, but I just wanted to mention that I, I really liked the kind of layers that there were to it. Um, they're working on writing a script. You're making a movie out of them making the script. Mm -hmm. And there are many moments when those levels converge like one uh, one woman says, uh, oh, you're filming us. And he's, they say, oh, it's just for the crew to look at later. But of course we know, <laughs> you know, Reem is there too. <laughs> and then I, I really liked the, um, towards the end where uh, she says, is this another film about Syrian women uh, coming here? If so, I don't want to be part of it because honestly, I'm really bored with it. Saving that for the end is sort of very interesting because this is a film about, <laughs> this is a play about, you know, but at the same time, it was important to express that tiredness with so certain expectations, I think, that come with saying, okay, this is a film about Syrian women who have, you know, come here as refugees, and then there's a certain expectation. And I would say your film really defied those expectations yeah. amazingly. Yeah. 
So um, I have other questions, but let me now open it up to the floor for anybody who wants to. The idea that I had before about how I'm, I'm going to make the film was different. Mm -hmm. So the whole new structure that you saw is from this dynamic, this difficult, problematic dynamic. Before, I wanted to mix reality and theater together, to make you dizzy, don't know where, when, what, how. Uh, but I couldn't. I think there was one moment like that, <laughs> <laughs> which is when um, Bayan, I think, yes. is saying, um, I don't want to be there or he, I don't want to be between them there and here yes. and here and then I, I thought she's saying those words but then it's towards the end, end she it. stumbled looked down and said like, oh it's a script <laughs> so that was a very nice moment okay. of uncertainty <laughs> as your character as the women said um, it's very as an actor you can portray the role of someone else and that's much easier than portraying yourself Right. Um, so as this play, as the as it went on, as the production went on, as the rehearsals, quote unquote, went on, did it even reach the point where one or more women said, "I can't go on. I cannot bear my soul this much." Did you have anybody that said, "I'm leaving"? Um, and how did you deal with? Was there a rebellion? I guess I'm asking at one point of of being asked too too much of asked too much of people. You mean me or them? No, of them, of them. Yeah, some left. They couldn't. It was that emotional. It's about them at the end yes. of the day. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And they were still in the wound. The wound uh, their wounds were still really warm. And they are young. Even they are in their late 20s. Actually, they are in their teenaging. <laughs> because they haven't lived their own life. No, I couldn't. Uh, it's not my role. Okay. It's not for me to do that. Yes. Hi, Rim. Thank you for the film. And um, I have a question about the uh, uh, material. How long the material was? How many hours? And they were was material from very different devices, so you probably needed to work very hard regarding the editing process. And I'll uh, two questions first. Uh, yeah, how many hours and uh, how uh, difficult uh, was for you, for example, assuming that you had wonderful scenes, but they didn't uh, really uh, work for the story. So yeah, about the role of the editing process. Thank you. I have 400 hours. I filmed for four months and a half with sometimes three cameras. Depends. And the rushes the ladies bring to me from their mobile was also, one of them was 80 hours. <laughs> so I had like, <laughs> you cannot imagine how, I started editing in Poland, by the way, in Warsaw. And uh, this film, this is the third version of the film. I tried three times. Each time was a lot of work, simply until we reached this, this was in Lebanon. The editing was very, very, very difficult. <coughs> because of the, because it's two worlds, it's cinema and theater. And it's, uh, I insisted on having all the ladies. So they are seven characters. In Berlin, in Berlin and in theater and in their own world. So you see the map is 
too much and it took it took a time it took me four years to reach at the end this balance between all these worlds yes um, yeah I've I, I would love you to talk a little more about the whole editing process because it is a phenomenal, I mean, the, the, it, it's incredible that you had so much footage and that, how did you structure it? Did you start with uh, the idea, did you have a matrix in, in your head that this is exactly what I'm going to do? Or how did you, what did you leave out eventually yeah. in all of this? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I left a lot <laughs> out of it. Um, I started <coughs> stupidly by chronological, just to watch it day by day, um, accumulating, mm -hmm. to see how that happened until they reached that, the end, and what they felt every day. And from there, I went to then to characters stories by, I tried the chronological uh, structure, then I tried the characters, uh, each one alone, and then uh, all of them mixed together. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually, I tried everything with this one. <laughs> I tried everything until I reached the last version. I also liked the way you had basically one key idea from the original play that runs through the film is the last line of your film yeah. about it's better to live, uh, it's better to live they a life to, of yeah. misery the, uh, than to die in glory. It's, it's the yeah, original it's thing for all of all us, of, yeah. not only them, right. even me, yes. like them. Yes. I, wa I went through what they went through also. Yes. That's why I also I, I, I identify with them, yes. and therefore I, I identify with, with that, Iphigenia. That line, yeah. And that with that line at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah. It's, it's, I see that as the thing structuring. Yes. Because it occurs repeatedly. Until I reached that, I had to pass through all those structures mm -hmm. to get to the point to that line. Yeah. These Ladies want to live, yeah. that's it. Hi, uh, more of a comment. I mean, there were so many scenes that were absolutely hauntingly beautiful, but I was very struck by eyes in several of the women. Um, obviously at the end, the crying eyes, but you also have a scene in which a woman is saying, I still have one eye closed, and you shot her from only one side, and then the eyes falling asleep. So there's a lot of eyes that you really zoomed in on. So do you want to say more about your choice? Um, I'm sure it was a choice. Maybe it wasn't. What do you think about how much this movie looks at eyes? Um, sorry. It's okay. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> Uh, when I film, I always go with my senses. I really don't, sometimes I don't know how to articulate that. It's my instinct and my senses. And I was so attached to these women at that moment in a way that I was like all the time as if I'm trying to reach them or touch them or be so, uh, tell them how much I feel that. So I think I was withdrawn. But usually I love clothes. I always, I don't know how to <laughs> have a general shot. <laughs> I, I always I always write in my memoir, <laughs> Reem today is a general shot. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Otherwise, I will have all close-ups, extreme close-ups, all the time. I'm a catastrophe with that. Uh, yes. I, you may have already answered this, but I felt like I maybe missed it and I wanted to ask again. I really liked what you were talking about, about sharing authorship with the women in the play about the film, but also their... Um, like exhaustion with films made about uh, them and also about you, and uh, have I maybe missed it? Any of them see it yet? 
Have any of the women in the play seen your film in any version? Yes. All of them. So this one. Mm -hmm. And they can you tell us a bit about the, their response? The response? Uh, <laughs> look, it gives me like, it was a great one. I didn't expect it. I was really frightened and waiting for, um, I was uh, also, they are in Germany and I was in Lebanon at the time and they watched it with the producer and they insisted on calling me immediately uh, to convey their own feelings and they were like talking over each other speaking like this and a very happy, um, happy they felt that they exist in dignity, not begging for uh, emotions and happy that um, they express and happy that someone listened. So all of their senses were, I don't know how to say it, satisfied, let's say. <sighs> yes. Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed your film a lot. The, um, I was thinking about that too, what you just said about um, the connection they felt with their own representation in terms of the dynamic between the actors and the directors of the play as a kind of, you know, uh, a power relationship, and then this sort of other position being in there as a triangle to that, which is really interesting. One of my favorite parts of the film was um, the way the camera captures women thinking, and I was thinking about how how little we see women represented thinking, um, and how the women are both thinking and performing, like they're covering kind of what they feel and sort of represent, you know, in sort of demonstrating what they feel in the close-up shots. So um, it's another layer of performance then too that they probably <laughs> carry into their lives in the you know the camp or wherever. Um, so I was wondering if you could say a bit about the. I guess the intimacy of that, of watching their faces <coughs> that way. I don't know how. <laughs> uh, again, I feel more than I speak or reason. So especially with the camera, especially if I'm behind the camera. If I'm filming, I really don't think. It's um, spontaneously, it goes like that. But again, I was fascinated by these young ladies because at their age, I was not able to fight back as they did when they didn't like the script or when they didn't like an attitude. Although they were weak, they were very strong. So that was just um, fascinating. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 may, I uh, did my best to capture as much as I can from those moments and to put them specially in this version to show that side of them. Part? I have a follow-up question about the footage you had and the um, work in the editing room. And um, you know probably uh, much more about the characters that we see on the, in the film. So uh, could you make this audience here special and let us know if there were certain scenes recorded that you needed to cut, you didn't include them in the film because of the um, structure and the dramaturgy didn't let you, but it were, they were certain scenes that you really love them separately from the film. Does it make sense? Yes, actually they were a lot. But if you could say like seriously, one or two about the characters. Uh, to recall that now. No. Could you tell us if the one woman got the lawyer? 
the actually Fox Pune, the theater yes. itself, oh. helped her okay. with that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's fine now. Okay. She's fine. And she became a uh, stand up comedy. <laughs> stand up comedian. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> Stand-up comedian, you can find her on Instagram, Zena Kefri. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I cannot recall uh, Yolanta, but I will tell you when I will recall that. Because there were a lot. Actually, most of my filming outside the, outside the um, theater, that was gone away. Uh, I filmed a lot with them in their homes. I filmed with them in the city. I filmed even the play. Um, I filmed the play itself with infrared. Uh, you know this choice on the camera? It was by chance, by the way. Uh, just accidentally that I couldn't see anything while I was filming. And there were this infrared button. I just tried it, and I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fantastic. I have materials that I'm very proud of. Really, I'm very proud of that material. I don't know yet what I'm going to do with that material. But uh, they are very different. That, was, that actually, wa I was sad when I had to take out. That I was very sad. Um, I just want to ask what the play was like. Did you see the play? Um, and what did the women think of the play? I just, you know, in my mind, I'm painting this comparative picture of how the play tells their story and how you tell their story. And yeah, maybe, you know, you have. The play was, uh, they were nine women. Mm -hmm. um, nine? Yes, nine women. Each one went uh, on into the stage for 10 minutes, telling her story uh, through the questions that she mm -hmm. got from the interviewer. And that's it. Each one, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, one by one, mm -hmm. till the end. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> It was boring. <laughs> Sorry, but we are a family here, and it's closed <laughs> between us. It was very boring, but it was very important for the ladies to be in the community, to be exposed under the lights in the community of Berlin, and people came, and how they people congratulated them. It was you will forget any boring <laughs> thing in comparison to this. They needed support. They needed to feel that they have, they have a society around them. And that was the good thing about the whole experience. The experience was very difficult and sometimes abusive, in my opinion, if you ask me honestly, between us in this room. <laughs> Yeah, but at the end of the day, it presented things to the ladies that they make you somehow say, okay, I will shut up for now. I think we're close to it. We might just have a couple more questions. Um, so we've talked, but maybe you could share um, you know, now that you, you might not have a lot of perspective, but I know you're finished with the film. Right. And what's next? What are you thinking about? Um, what did you learn from the film and what are you moving towards? Uh, towards my next film, to write first. <laughs> that was the first lesson actually, because with this film, I was running from moment one to just film, 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 and the pile is going, <laughs> growing, while I didn't know what is it, what's in it, and what to do with it. So it took years after, it 
to work with. This is, this is not wrong, or it's not about wrong or right. This is a way. But I prefer now to write first and to see my images before, to practice my eye to see my images. That's why now I'm concentrating more on really writing. What are you talking about when you said you write first? Like to write your film first. Okay. Write it on paper. Okay, so like sort it out. Kind this of is another kind of writing. Uh, this one, I wrote it by, uh, by filming and by editing, mostly editing. Okay. But the next one, I would like to write, write it before on paper. Um, I just want to salute you first because this is an amazing work um, and it, I think it's because I relate on several levels. A, I'm a Syrian woman and then I'm living abroad and it's very interesting to see a Syrian director capturing this in a way that's not about politics or religion. Um, and I feel this helps the audience to actually see what's happening and connect rather than just fight about topics that's not going to get anyone anywhere, at least for now. Um, and I was just so happy to see how you captured the small things that truly represent uh, Syrians and Syrian women. Um, and I feel like, you, like through your film, we did um, get your fascination it was because we're fascinated and you very well depicted that um, and I feel like this kind of work uh, just makes everything better and easier like for me to watch this now um, I feel like I feel more in love with Syrians and Syria and myself because I see how beautiful our accent is, how beautiful our small remarks and gestures and our, our like strong will to, to move on and to continue. Um, regard, I mean, yeah, it's just amazing. And even though it might appear as, well, it's simple, it's just like a documentary, it's not because it's, it really um, matters what you're focusing on. And you, in my opinion, chose the, the right things to focus on to portray your message. I have a question, though. I feel, <laughs> I feel that um, everyone has a purpose of doing what they're doing. And for example, I might relate to something in the movie. Someone else might relate to something completely different. Um, I really love what I'm seeing in the movie. But what was your main purpose behind well, doing this, I mean, you could have chosen a different topic or a different, like, why this? And why, I mean, you kept going even though very difficult circumstances. At one point, you, you could have been like, okay, what am I trying to get there? If I'm living, it's still there. I'm living it. I'm living the difficulties, the, the, the not-so-great reality. What is it that I'm trying to get there, out there? So what, is, what was your purpose? That's the most difficult question today. <laughs> um, all of them are me. And at the end of the day, I was looking for me. I'm exploring me. It's w especially, I think, with our line of work, we look into us. We keep looking and looking and looking, discovering and th I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't have a lot of vocabularies <laughs> in, in English, but all what I can say, it's, it's me, and I wanted to know more. By the way, the ladies are not uh, actresses. The, uh, only two of them used to act. The rest of them are um, amateurs, first time on stage. 
So I th we could take two more questions. And yeah. Yeah. And Reem will be here um, for a while, but also after this event to talk. Yeah. Thank you. I also want to um, say I was really touched by the film and related to a lot. Um, and it's not always, I haven't seen a lot of work uh, where the humanity of a young woman and in all her, you know, different facets of the vulnerability and the, and the feistiness and the pushback is captured in this strong way. So thank you for that. Um, my question is sort of similar to the previous one, but slightly different that um, you said you were looking for yourself and there's this impulse to sort of, um, you know, capture what you felt like you may, you, you know, you mentioned earlier you weren't able to be as strong um, when you were their age. I'm wondering what you learn about yourself and how that might um, inform uh, the practice, or what did you learn about your practice as a filmmaker that, from that experience that you'll carry forward? Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, has this impacted the way you see your work, and, and what are some things you're thinking about um, as a filmmaker from that experience? Yes, of course, a lot, actually, on many levels. Uh, even the silliest uh, moment of editing or cutting on the timeline, that, uh, that was something I learned, and I learned a lot from it, because it was in a specific situation. I was with a specific emotions. It's uh, all connected. Yeah, of course. I think the uh, film did a very good job of conveying the uh, emotional burden that um, a lot of these uh, women had to bear, uh, and, and especially how it's uh, like hard to like move on and, and, and cope in life uh, when you're like carrying that great weight. Um, and uh, so I was just I was just wondering, um, do you have anything to share about uh, like how these women have like? Like, um, like, like, coped and dealt in their lives with this. Like you mentioned, Zena became a comedian, and have others like, like, found like purpose or like, what, what have they done to deal with uh, that? Bayan, uh, she wanted to be an actress, and she's now um, going up in the German cinema. She graduated from. She finally was accepted, and graduating from an institute of acting, and now she is. A hero in uh, films. Um, Allah is studying something about. I forgot, but she's she's doing something she likes. She studied finally, she did it, and now she is looking for a job, which is very good because she was for years at home just looking, staring at walls. Uh, most of them, most of them like that. Some didn't advance at all, and some yes. Um, earlier, or similar to what someone said earlier, uh, but slightly different, um, my parents are from Syria, but I was born here, so like, I relate to a lot of it, but also I saw new perspectives that I was very uh, ignorant about. Um, I forget the woman's name, but one of them reminded me so much of my aunt that's still in Syria um, about, like, I think, the one with the lawyer, I think, I don't remember her name. Zaina. Zaina. Um, because, like, I see my mom here, like, fighting so much, trying to get my aunt over here with different issues with lawyers and legal stuff, but I didn't, like, see as much as, like, the emotional tool that it takes, and that was really um, interesting to see stuff that I'm not used to seeing from that side. Because I've been there before, and to Syria multiple times, but they obviously don't show me things like that. They just want me to have a good time. So, <laughs> but that was really, um, I was really grateful to see things that I don't usually see, even when I'm there. But I know earlier you said you, you do uh, try to find yourself in your film, so with the one you're currently working on now or wanting to write, do you still want to relate it to like your Syrian part of yourself, or is it could it be, towards any part of your identity, whether that's just like being a woman or identifying this way? Do you want like your future works to 
always relate back to Syria somehow, or do you want it to be just a very wide range? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've done my share. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.